Hello again. So this time I have something a little more modern. In fact, it's from the 20th century. It's very modern. 1910. It is uh, the Book of Forbidden Knowledge. Black Magic, Superstition, Charms, and Divination. First edition, 1910s, Johnson Smith and Company. New edition, 2016, edited by Tarl Warwick. So, give you a little bit of background on this particular piece of literature. This work is one of a number of manuscripts crafted toward the end of the 1800s, well into the 1920s, containing material related to all aspects of the occult, mesmerism, ceremonial magic, black arts, talismans, and more. What is interesting here is that all of the above and more are contained in one work instead of separately. Speaking of everything from fortune telling to folk healing, the Book of Forbidden Knowledge is perhaps better classed as a modern grimoire than most contemporary works of similar origin. The paper covers any of a number of competing Victorian and Edwardian era titles. Divination, or How to Obtain Knowledge of Future Events. Now, would everyone like to know what's coming down their path? Any person fasting on Midsummer Eve and sitting on the church porch will, at midnight, see the spirits of the person of that parish who will die that year. Come and knock at the church door in the order and succession in which they will die. One of those watchers, there being several in company, fell into a profound sleep so that he could not be waked. Whilst in the state, his ghost was seen by the rest of his companions knocking at the church door. Any unmarried woman fasting on Midsummer Eve and at midnight laying in a clean cloth with bread, cheese, and ale, and sitting down as if going to eat, the street door being left open, the person whom she is afterward to marry will come into the room and drink to her by bowing, and afterward filling the glass will leave it on the table and making another bow, retire. That seems like a pleasant date. Don't need to call anyone. No awkward conversation. No having to risk rejection. It's a guaranteed nice evening. Not bad. On St. Agnes night, the 21st of January, take a row of pins, pull out every one, one after another, saying a paternoster on sticking a pin in your sleeve, and you will dream of him you shall marry. Another method to see a future spouse in a dream. The party inquiring must lie in a different country than that in which he commonly resides, and on going to bed must knit the left garter about the right legged stocking, letting the other garter and stocking alone and as you rehearse the following verses at every comma knit a knot. So it's saying you have to be in a different country. I'm guessing a different countryside. I doubt a different nation entirely, but the language is a little different. In any case, this is what you say when you knit a knot. This knot I knit, to know a thing I know not yet, that I may see, the man that shall my husband, how he goes, and what he wears, and what he does all days and years. Accordingly, in a dream he will appear, the insignia of his trade or profession, another performed by charming the moon, thus, at the first appearance of the new moon. Immediately after the New Year's Day, go out in the evening, 
stand over the spears of a gates of style, and, looking on the moon, repeat the following lines. All hail to thee, all hail to thee. I prithee, good moon, reveal to me this night who my husband must be. They sound sweet, don't they? The party will then dream of their future husband. A slice of the bridal cake, rice thrown through the wedding ring, and laid under the head of an unmarried woman, will make them dream of their future husband. The same is practiced in the north with a piece of groaning cheese. Now what in the hell is groaning cheese? I don't know. I'm not sure that I want to know. It doesn't sound that tasty. And I doubt I'd want to bite into some cheese that tends to groan. In any case. How to receive oracles by dreams. Me, by dreams, that doesn't seem too bad. Probably a lot less strenuous or time consuming than doing it manually. So getting some oracles by sleep could be very productive. He who would receive true dreams should keep a pure, undisturbed, and imaginative spirit, and so compose it that it may be made worthy of knowledge and government by the mind. For such a spirit is the most fit for prophesizing, and is a most clear glass of all things. When, therefore, we are sound in body, not disturbed in mind, our intellect not made dull by heavy metals and strong drink. What's wrong with the strong drink? Not sad through poverty, not provoked through lust. Oh my. Not incited by any vice, not stirred up by wrath or anger, not being irreligious and profanely inclined, not given to levity, nor lost in drunkenness, but chastely going to bed, all asleep, then our pure and divine soul, being free from all the evils above recited. Well, I don't know about all those things being evil, but I guess for the purposes of this ritual, one must behave. By dreaming is endowed with the divine spirit as an instrument, and does receive those beams and representations which are darted down, as it were, and shine forth from the divine mind into itself, in a deifying glass. There are four kinds of true dreams, viz. The first, matutine, i.e. between sleeping and waking. The second, that which one sees concerning another. The third, that what, whose, that whose interpretation is shown to the same dreamer in the nocturnal vision. And lastly, that which is related to the same dreamer in the nocturnal vision. But natural things and their own commixtures do likewise belong unto wise men. And we often use such to receive oracles from the dream sorry, from a spirit by a dream, which are neither by perfumes, unctions, meat, drinks, rings, seals, etc. The writing itself in this is a, it's obviously from 1910. A lot of commas and a lot of um, sentence structure that at first reading seems a bit off when you're listening, so... No, I did not make a mistake, at least that I'm aware of. It's just written that way. Now, those who are desirous to receive oracles through a dream, let them make themselves a ring of the Sun or Saturn for this purpose. There are likewise images of dreams which being put under the head when going to sleep do effectually give true dreams of whatever the mind hath before determined or consulted upon, the practice of which is as follows. 
So if you want to have specific dreams about specific things and do a little divination via dream, do the following. You shall make an image of the sun, the figure, whereas must be a man sleeping upon the bosom of an angel. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Which you will make the, when Leo ascends, the sun being in the ninth house in Aries. Then you must write upon the figure the name of the effect desired, and in the hand of the angel the name and character of the intelligence of the sun, which is Michael. I always knew the sun was a bright guy. But I had no idea. Let the same image be made in Virgo ascending. Mercury being fortunate in Aries in ninth, or Gemini ascending. Mercury being fortunate in the ninth house in Aquarius, and let him be received by Saturn with a fortunate aspect, and let the name of the spirit, which is Raphael, be written upon it. Let the same likewise be made, Libra ascending, Venus being received from Mercury and Gemini in the ninth house, and write upon it the name of the angel of Venus, which is on an isle. Again, you may make the same image, Aquarius ascending, Saturn fortunately possessing the ninth in his exaltation, which is Libra, and let there be written upon it the name of the angel of Saturn, which is Cassiel. Cassiel. Apologies. The same may be made with Cancer ascending, the Moon being received by Jupiter and Venus in Pisces, and being fortunately placed in the ninth, ninth house. And right upon it, the Spirit of the Moon, which is Gabriel. There are likewise made rings of dreams of wonderful efficacy, and there are rings of the Sun and Saturn, and the constellation of them is when the Sun or Saturn ascend into their exaltation in the night. And when the moon is joined to Saturn in the ninth, and in that sign, which was the ninth house of the Nativity, and write in the grave upon the rings the name of the spirit of the sun or Saturn, and by these rules you may know how and by what means to constitute more of yourself. But know this, that such images work nothing, as they are simply images except they are vivified by spiritual and celestial virtue, and chiefly by the ardent desire and firm intent of the soul of the operator. But who can give a soul to an image, or make a stone, or metal, or clay, or wood, or wax, or paper to live? Certainly no man whatever, for this arcanum does not enter into an artist of a stiff neck. He only has it who transcends the progress of angels, and comes to the very archetype himself. The tables of numbers likewise confer to the receiving of oracles, being duly formed under their own constellations. Therefore, he who is desirous of receiving true or oracles by dreams, let him abstain from supper, from drink, and be otherwise well disposed. If I didn't eat my supper, I don't think I'd be well disposed. I'd probably be hangry, anything. So his brain will be free from turbulent vapors. Let him also have his bed, chamber, fair and clean, exercised and consecrated. Then let him perfume the same with some convenient fumigation. Let him anoint his temples with some unguent, efficacious, efficacious unto and put a ring of dreams upon his finger. Then let him take one of the images we have spoken of, and place the same under his head. Then let him address himself to sleep, meditating upon that thing which he desires to know. What would you guys like to know? What would you ask for in such a state? What do you claim from this oracle? I wonder. So shall he receive a most certain and undoubted oracle by a dream when the moon goes through the sign of the ninth revolution of his nativity.
and she, in the ninth, sign from the sign of perfection. This is the way whereby we may obtain all sciences and arts whatsoever, whether astrology, occult philosophy, physic, etc., or else, suddenly and perfectly, with a true illumination of intellect, although all inferior familiar spirits whatsoever conduce to this effect, and sometimes also evil spirits, sensibly inform us intrinsically and extrinsically. Now, when I'm doing these readings, and I just kind of skip around, my intention isn't to read the entirety of the thing. It's more just to give you a taste of it, so you can you know, catch a glimpse into that particular book. Um, and again, I will provide a link um, along with the video or probably in the comment below telling you where to find it to purchase it. A lot of these books are very cheap. I'm talking digitally, of course, but uh, $2.50, $1.50, $2. Very cheap. You can get them on your Kindle or computer or however you like to read stuff digitally. Um, easily available. These might be very old, very esoteric type stuff, but it's not expensive. So you can partake and enjoy, practice what you will. Anyway, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit um, to the Witch's Chain. Mind you, this is the first time I've read some of these, so I don't even know what I'm in for. But let's find out. The Witch's Chain. Let three young women join together in making a long chain, that a yard will do, of Christmas juniper and mistletoe berries, and at the end of every link, put an oak acorn. Exactly before midnight, let them assemble in a room by themselves, where no one can disturb them. <laughs> Leave a window open, then take the key out of the keyhole, and hang it over the chimney piece. Have a good fire, place in the midst of it a long, thin log of wood, well sprinkled with oil, salt, and fresh mold. Mold. Hmm. Then wrap the chain round it, each maiden having an equal share in the business. Then sit down, and on your left knee, let each fair one have a prayer book, open at the matrimonial service. Just as the last acorn, just as the last acorn is burned, the future husband will cross the room. Each one will see her own proper spouse, but he will be invisible to the rest of the wakeful virgins. Those that are not be wed will see a coffin, oh my, or some misshapen form. Well, that's just depressing, isn't it? Everyone else gets to see your spouse or husband. You see a floating coffin or a blob. Man, that's worse than not catching the uh, the bouquet at the wedding, isn't it? Anyway, cross the room, go to the bed instantly, and you will all have remarkable dreams, except for the one with the coffin. I'm guessing this must be done either on a Wednesday or Friday night, but no other. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> I liked the bit with the coffin. It's nice. Let's skip ahead a bit. Let's see here. Well, we got love letters, magic rose. That sounds fun. Let's do magic rose. Magic rose. Gather your rose on the 27th of June. Let it be full blown. Bloomed? This is blown. And as a bright and as bright a red as you can get. Pluck it between the hours of 3 and 4 in the morning, taking care to have no witness of the transaction. Convey it to your chamber and hold it over a charting dish or any convenient utensil for the purpose. In which there is charcoal and sulfur or brimstone. Hold your rose over the smoke about 5 minutes, and you will see it have a wonderful effect on the flower. 
before the rose gets the least cool, clap it on a sheet of writing paper, on which is written your own name and that of the young man you love best. There you go, ladies. Also, the date, or the year, and the name of the morning star has the ascendancy at that time. Or gentlemen, my apologies. The flower, here let it remain untouched to the 6th of July. Take it up at midnight, go to bed, and place it under your pillow. And you will have a singular and most eventful dream before morning, or at least before your usual time of rising. You may keep the rose under your head three nights without spoiling the charm. When you are done with the rose and paper, be sure to burn them. It says he sure to burn them. I don't know if that's the time. Oh, that's what they meant. In any case, um, I could only guess what kind of dream will occur. It'd be a very special sort of dream. <laughs> I'm starting to see why this information was considered forbidden knowledge at the time. <laughs> Quite forbidden. Indeed. Alright, after that we mostly have um, lists, numbers, um, you know, there are various qualities, days of the week, um, what behavior or rituals and such are particularly useful during that time. Um, that's, that's all interesting, but, you know, for the sake of the listener, I'd rather get to something a little juice here. So, I have here Secrets of Black Magic Revealed. It's a portion about, well, a little before halfway through the book. Let's start. When a person desires to remove corns, I didn't think it was going to start like this. I guess this is a secret of black magic. Anyway. When they bury an old man and the funeral bells are ringing, the following should be spoken. They are sounding the funeral bell. And what I know, and what I now grasp may soon be well. And what ill I grasp do take away, like the dead one in the grave does lay. While reciting the sentence, always hold the troll part in the hand. I guess the part with the corns. And regarding the corns, well, there you go. Move over them with your finger after cutting out the corns, and as long as they are tolling, the bells repeat the above. As soon as the dead body begins to bleach, the corns will disappear. Probate in the case of a male, wait for the funeral of one of that sex. In the case of a female, wait until a female is to be buried. Now, I don't know how often funerals happen around you, but if they happen often, you know, no, never have to worry about corns, your feet or otherwise. Very good. When a sore fails to break open. Again, I didn't think it would just be a bunch of somewhat gross medical things, but... Hmm. Take virgin parchments as large as a sore. Put it first in the water and then on the sore spot. Propatum. That's it. For fresh wounds. Fresh is the wound. Blessed is the day. Happy the hour I found soon to stop and arrest thee, so that thou neither swell nor tester. I'm guessing it's supposed to be fester. Until mountains meet. So recite that. You know, when you have an open wound or gash, and um, it'll keep you from getting infections. It's worth a shot in combination with some, you know, antibiotics and maybe some rubbing alcohol. Throw in that recitation there, and good to go. To stay a shot. What does that mean? Shot stands still in the name of the Lord, 
give neither fire nor flame, as sure as the rock of Gibraltar, Gibraltar remains firm, while dissolving it, dissolving what? Well, while dissolving it, say, God saw his joy and glory. I'm not sure what a shot is and how to stay it. The uh, only kind of staying the shot I can think of is the, you know, a rifle or a camera. This is written in 1910, so more than likely a rifle. Or staying a shot. This is referring to something else that I'm familiar with. To compel a thief to return the stolen property. No, this is good. Obtain a new earthen pot with a cover. Draw water from the undercurrent of a stream while calling out the three holiest names. Fill the vessel one third full. Take the same to your home. Set it upon the fire. Take a piece of bread from the lower crust of a loaf. Stick three pins into the bread. Boil all in the vessel. Add a few new nettles. Then say, Thief, male or female, bring my stolen articles back. Whether thou art boy or girl, thief. If thou art woman or man, I compel thee in the name. To make a magnetic compass, which will serve to discover the treasures and ores in the earth. So if you're going to go mining, looking for some gold, diamonds and such, it's the one for you. For this purpose, a magnet made of husband perfection accompanied by the prime material of which all metals grow, is requisite. With this, the magnet of the compass must be strengthened. Around the compass are engraved the characteristics, characteristic signs of all the seven metals. If it is desired now to ascertain what kind of metal is most likely to be found in a hidden treasure or in our beneath the earth, it will be only necessary to his, to that particular spot, the magnetic rod has given the indication, but you must put your foot there where the perpendicular shows its attraction, and take of every metal a small piece, that is, one as heavy as the other, and lay it upon the respective character, and the needle will rotate that metal which predominates under the surface of the earth, and there it will stand still. Sounds like a really good... You know, get rich quick scheme right there. To discern in a mirror what an enemy designs at the distance of three miles or more. Three miles or more. I wonder why that distance is for, like why there's a limitation as far as the distance. Three miles or more. Like I would think radius. Say three miles or less. Like you could only reach a specific radius. But it's three miles or more. Which is a bit strange. Obtain a good plain looking glass, as large as you please, and have it framed on three sides only. Upon the left side it should be left open. Such a glass must be held toward the direction where the enemy is existing, and you will be able to discern all his markings, maneuverings, his doings, and workings. Was effectually used during the Thirty Years' War. Well, wouldn't have lasted thirty years was pretty effectual. Just kidding. Bad joke. For violent toothaches. For you dentist haters out there. Something for you. Take a new nail. Pick with this the tooth till it bleeds. Then take this nail and insert it in place where neither sun or moon ever shines into. Perhaps in the rafters of the bin in a cellar toward the rising of the sun. With the first stroke upon the nail, call the name of him whom you design to help, and speak. Toothache, fly away. By the second stroke, toothache, cease, pain away. Now, there's a large variety of different things here. Um, I would highly suggest purchasing this book. I mean, we're looking at the literal secrets to black magic here for only, I think, $2.50? Maybe $2.00? I remember correctly. Might be wrong. In any case, I'm going to read off some of these titles. I'll stop at which of the ones sound the most interesting. So let's see here. What else do we have? First, here. 
eye water, which makes the sight clear so that no spectacles are needed. Save money on glasses. To recover stolen goods. So if you don't want to catch the thief, you just want stolen goods. There you go. To secure one's self against robbers while traveling. Again, useful, especially if you go to the bad parts of the city. Also for the toothache. Toothache. How to make oneself agreeable to all. To fasten a person that he may not escape. Ooh. I'm going to read that one. Take a needle wherewith the gown from a corpse had been sewed and put this needle into the footprints of the person you seek to fasten. And never will that person so treated be able to get away. Okay. Where do I find these needles? Right? To have good luck in playing and how to make yourself liked by people. To try if a person is chaste. How to cause your intended wife to love you. <laughs> when you wish that your sweetheart shall not deny you. An Ambrose Stone. When an animal is stupid. There's a spell in ritual here dedicated to using it. When an animal is stupid. Let's find out. When an animal is stupid, when it runs around runs around as if it had the rams, or when it carries the head upon one side, which signifies a sort of woe or pain, it may arise from heat and superfluous blood. Hence it would be good to bleed such a beast three or four times, especially on a Friday. In all cases, however, if an animal should suffer from such an ailment, pronounce the following grace three times over it. The first time stand upon the right side of the animal, the second time on its left side, the third time again upon the right side, and while saying the grace, move constantly your hand over the back of the animal. Hmm. It mentions a grace, but I'm not sure which in particular you're supposed to be saying. Pronounce the following grace three times over. Hmm. I don't see here the actual grace that's supposed to be said. Instructions on when to say it, but not the actual grace. It's unfortunate. I have a few stupid animals in my life that I'd like to help not be stupid. To make oneself shot proof. Okay, I'm starting to think shot is bullet. Because. Let's see, according to this formula, on the day of Peter and Paul and Vesper Tide, there spring upon wayward roots, or which hunters and men of the forest believe that he who carries them on his person cannot be hit or shot. There you go. So for when you're hunting or engaging in war, you can become shot proof. To catch fish, to banish all robbers, murderers, and foes, to sight a witch. In case one suffers from a theft, a lot of robbing and thievery stuff here. That no witch may leave a church. Another way to cause return of stolen property. <laughs> to obtain money. You guys want me to read that? Oh, you want to obtain money? Okay. Take the eggs of a swallow, boil them, return them to the nest. And if the old swallow brings a root to the nest, take it, put it in your purse, and carry it in your pocket, and be happy. Be happy, that's part of the instructions. It's pretty. I like that. To open locks. To understand the song of birds. To stop bleeding of a wound. How to obtain a good memory. To make a person dislike gambling. While traveling. That no person will deny anything to you. Old roots for the teething of children. Oh my god, the instructions for that are actually few pages long, which is interesting considering that some of these other things are much more complicated than gold roots for the teething of children. When a person has sprained himself to make yourself invisible. Oh, we learned about this, right? Remember? Severed man's head with the with the beans? Okay, well let's see let's see if this is easier. Let's only one sentence. That's good. Pierce the right eye of a bat and carry it with you, and you will be invisible. That's it folks. Grab yourself a bat, puncture it its right eye, and carry it in your pocket. No one will see you. To prevent children from having measles or becoming blind. 
when lungs of cattle swell. Some of these problems are probably not too relevant to some of you. For the itch or scar, for open sores, gouty limbs, coagulate blood, lice. When a gun is bewitched. Interesting, so the an enchanted weapon. How to disenchant an enchanted weapon. To keep warm in the winter, for we can talismans, charm spells, and incantations. And now we have a list of different talismans we can use. Which also come with images. And I would, again, I suggest purchasing this particular edition. And let's see here. Let's, get, let's, let's do one more. One more. Well, now we have a list of popular superstitions. Uh, here we go. How to make your lover or sweetheart come. Come to you. That's what I think that's what it means. If a maid wishes to see her lover, let her take the following method. Prick the third or wedding finger of your left hand with a sharp needle. Beware a pin. And with the blood write your own and lover's name on a piece of clean writing paper. And as small a compass as you can, and encircle it with three round rings of the same crimson stream. Ooh, I like that for blood. Crimson stream. Fold it up, and exactly at the ninth hour of the evening, bury it with your own hand in the earth, and tell no one. Your lover will hasten to you as soon as possible, and he will not be able to rest until he sees you. And if you have quarreled to make it up, a young man may also try this charm, only instead of the wedding finger, let him pierce the left thumb. And so on and so forth. So I'm only about halfway through the book here. So as you can imagine, there is quite a few interesting things. Revealing murders, lucky dreams, so on and so forth. I might have to do another part to continue this. Because this particular audio has gone on long enough. To the few that do listen, uh, I'll be doing this again next week so don't worry it won't be too long and perhaps we can continue the second half of this interesting book forbidden knowledge thank you have yourself a wonderful evening or morning whichever